what would make your house the preferred destination for Jesus? That is my question for you this morning. What will make your home the preferred destination for God? In the first reading, we are told the Lord visited Abraham. And that visitation took the form of those three men who came by Abraham's tent. In the gospel reading, we heard that Jesus was welcomed by Martha into her home. And that is why I ask you this morning, what will make your home the preferred destination for Jesus? You know the Latin phrase, Ubi et amor, ibi deus est. Ubi caritas et amor, ibi deus est. Where there is a love and charity, there God is. So if you want to make your home where God will want to send his messengers, where Jesus will want to feel welcome, then there must be love, then there must be kindness, then there must be understanding, then there must be peace. Because these are the virtues that attract God, that attract Jesus to find a dwelling in our homes. But we also know that we have another home, the home of our hearts. If you read Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. Whoever opens, I will enter and sit at table with him or with her. So in addition to thinking about your home, the physical space, and thinking through how to make it welcoming for God or for Jesus, we must also think of how we prepare the home of our hearts so that Jesus would want to dwell there. In the first reading, we are reminded of that popular story of Abraham receiving the three men who were passing his way. And that is a classic example of what hospitality is all about. If you read Romans chapter 12, verse 13, the word of God will tell us, practice hospitality. Again, in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 9, Peter, writing to the early community, will remind them of this Christian virtue. He tells them, exercise hospitality without complaining. So what Abraham does in the Old Testament is confirmed in the New. And for us who are disciples of Jesus, we are to live our Christian lives exercising hospitality. But brothers and sisters, I am sure we all do sometimes. We all exercise some form of hospitality or another. But what I am interested in this morning is how we do it. Because sometimes before we show one act of kindness, the complaining that we will do even nullifies the good deed that we perform. But look at Abraham here. These three men don't come begging Abraham for a favor. 
Abraham sees them passing, and we are told he runs to them and invites them to take a break, to wash their feet and take rest whilst he prepares some food for them. So there is an element of spontaneity anticipates the needs of these men and runs to meet that need. And keep in mind, this is a 99-year-old man running. I'm sure it wasn't an interesting sight. But the desire in him to perform that good deed to proceed at his physical limitation. So he runs to them, asks them to rest, he goes into his stall and picks a choice steer. A steer is a young cow prepared for beef. So that is what he chooses. Then he prepares a meal for them and sits at their feet. He waits on them as they ate. There is that spontaneity in being hospitable that, my dear people of God, Abraham is teaching us. How do we anticipate the needs of one another, whether in our homes or in our offices? And how do we address those needs? You would recall that in Genesis chapter 12, God had made a promise to Abraham that his descendants would be as many as the stars. Abraham was 75 years at that time. By 86, this promise had not been fulfilled. So you see Abraham having an affair with Hagar. Of course, through the instrumentality of his own wife, they give birth to Ishmael, and God still doesn't accept Ishmael as a son of promise. Abraham is 90, still no answer to that promise. 95, still no answer. And in chapter 17 of Genesis, God will come again to Abraham and say that, I am renewing my promise to you. And Abraham at this point will ask God, what do you mean? He made the promise, I have waited so long, it has not been fulfilled. And God will say, next year it will happen. He is 99 now. But look at how it happens. It happens when Abraham accepts these three people, feeds them, and while they were eating, they would ask, where is your wife Sarah? One says, next year we will come back, and she would have given you a son. So in this particular instance, that which unlocked the promise of God, that which brought promise to fruition was that generosity of Abraham himself. So when scripture says exercise hospitality and do it without complaining, my dear people of God, that may be the only way through which God will smile at you. That may be the only way through which God will fulfill the many promises he has made concerning your life. So exercise hospitality. Do it generously and do it spontaneously. In the gospel reading, we hear of Martha and Mary. Jesus goes to their home and Martha is busy in the kitchen and Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus listening to him. Friends, whenever in scripture you hear the expression someone is sitting at the feet of another person, it means the person is a disciple. So in Acts 22, you will see Paul would describe himself as sitting at the feet of Gamaliel. Gamaliel was a popular scholar at the time, and Paul was his disciple. So by Luke telling us 
that Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus. Luke is telling us where the place of a disciple is supposed to be. A disciple is one who sits at the feet of Jesus and listens to Jesus while Jesus instructs him or her. So it is not surprising that Jesus will say Mary has chosen the better part. So what Martha was doing was good. He was going through the rhythms of preparing a lavished meal. But for Jesus, the better part was listening to him. Here again, there is something I want to point out for your reflection. Why was Martha so worried? Martha thought she was doing her best. She thought that Jesus having traveled, that is what he needed. But forgetting that, at this point, Jesus was going to Jerusalem. He knew what was waiting for him in Jerusalem. So I am sure that there was even tension in his heart, that whole weight of the cross waiting for him. So the last thing on the mind of Jesus would be food. Maybe he wanted some quiet. Maybe he wanted to be alone. He wanted to talk. What am I driving at? Sometimes we are hurt because we show some kindness and we think we have done our best and it's not appreciated and we are so hurt. But for all you know, it may be a good kindness shown at the wrong time. Do we take into consideration the needs of the person that we want to show kindness to and try to meet that specific need? That is why in this instance, we are told that Mary had chosen the better part. So yes, showing kindness is good. But let us always think of the needs of the one to whom that kindness is being shown. Else it may be a good act, but not a better one. Jesus says Mary has taken the better part. And the better part is sitting at the feet of the master. So brothers and sisters, as we go through this new week, I have made a few points for prayer and for reflection. Make your home a preferred place for Jesus. And make the home of your heart also the preferred place for Jesus. Be spontaneous in how you show hospitality. Be spontaneous in how you show hospitality. And showing hospitality, they unlock for you certain blessings from God. In showing kindness, listen to the heart of the person you are being kind to. So that what you do will not only be good, but it will also be better. And above all, as disciples, let us sit at the feet of Jesus, listening to him, worshipping him, adoring him. So that what we do would always flow from the time we spend with Jesus.